gone mad. One banjo instruction website stands tall. The Tony Trishka School of Banjo. Thank you, Ned, for that warm endorsement there. This is <laughs> Ned Luberecki, my good buddy, traveling companion, and banjo buddy. We go back quite a few years, and uh, we are here, as with all these interviews we've been doing, at Nash Camp 2010. Yeah. And we are having a blast. And Ned, uh, thanks for being here. Just would like to talk about your background. Where, what got started? Boy, it's, it's been a long couple of days. It's been a long couple How'd of days. How'd you get started? <laughs> we'll say that. How'd you get started with the banjo? Um, I got started with the banjo back in the late 1970s, I guess it was. <laughs> um, it was, of all things, it was a company party that uh, the company my mother worked for, the boss there, just happened to like bluegrass. And he hired this bluegrass band to play at this, I don't even know what the shindig was for. It was just some kind of thing. And I remember watching this band play and uh, just being fascinated by the banjo player. I just was, was watching him go and, uh, you know, it's like the guitar player was singing and that was cool and the fiddle player would play some stuff and the mandolin player played, but the banjo just had that sound. It just had that, that action and it was all the time, you know, all the while he was playing backup and then playing things and I just thought it was the coolest sound and so uh, back then, of course, my other career choices being 13 years old were astronaut or fireman or professional baseball player. So I just happened to mention to mom, hey, I, I think I can learn how to do that. I want a banjo. And, you know, the day before that, I probably wanted a race car. You know, who knows? Um, but somehow to mom, the banjo seemed more attainable <laughs> and more sensible <laughs> than, than a race. So, so she, uh, she got me one. She found me one for Christmas. And, uh, and it wasn't long after that that I found a, a music store where a guy was giving lessons, and I really had no background in uh, in banjo at all, or in bluegrass at all. I didn't know anything about that kind of music. And when I started taking lessons, the guy had told me, he said, uh, he said, well, you got to go buy a record by this Earl Scruggs, you know, Earl Scruggs. And I said, well, okay. So I just happened to luck out. We went to the 5 and 10 in our local mall, and in the cutout bin, they had this uh, this record and it said Earl Scruggs on it, and it was called Foggy Mountain Banjo. And I had no idea then that that I had just lucked into the, lucked out. the perfect record. You know exactly the record I was supposed to get. And then it wasn't long after that actually, and this is actually kind of funny because the guy I took lessons from, a guy named Bob Tice from out in Maryland, he uh, was very Scruggs and Crow and very uh, very uh, you know. Well, very Jimmy Martin style banjo player, you know, and he really, he really wanted me to, to learn all that stuff. And but he kept telling me, and and this was maybe the most important thing that he ever he ever told me was to to just go out and buy a lot of banjo records or listen a lot. He kept saying, you know, you got to go buy some records by J D. Crow, you got to buy some records by whoever. But you know, he kept impressing on me that I had to listen a lot, and he would make me tapes. And so one day I was browsing through a record store and I found this, this record and it had a bunch of banjos on the cover and it was called Banjo Land. And I thought, well, this would be neat. It's got banjos on it. You know? So I, I bought it and brought it home and listened to it and I really liked it. It was, I knew different than the way Earl Scruggs played because <laughs> it was by this Tony Trishka cat. You know? And, and I, I played it for him and I remember his reaction was something like, yeah, that stuff's okay too, but here, listen to this Jimmy Martin record. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, so that's surprising. Yeah, but but that's 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 how I got into it, you know, and and uh, so what, what was the first tune you learned? If I can interrupt for a second, uh, the first I tune remember. I learned. Well, I I do remember at least this when I first got a banjo. Uh, I remember, you know, somehow luckily the thing was in tune when I got it home, and. And I was lucky enough to be able to figure out that I could play all the bugle calls just yeah. by going, you know, and and you know that doesn't seem like much, but to me it was huge. You yeah. know, it sounded like music. It was something coming out of the banjo that did. And when I when I finally took lessons, I remember kind of learning the rolls, and I got those okay. And it seems like it seems like. I remember playing Cripple Creek pretty early on. I remember the first tune I taught myself uh, that I learned by, by ear uh, off of a record. And, uh, and it, it came from, well, I don't know if anybody will recognize this or not, but I'll, I'll play it for you. And if you can tell who, whose recording it was, it was this.
part of his comedy routine where he went, Oh, death and grief and sorrow and murder. It was Steve Martin. It was from a Steve Martin. It was either Let's Get Small or Wild and Crazy Guy. It was one of those two records. And yeah. uh, he was one of my other, you and Steve were my two early influences on the band, and Earl. Yeah. For those of you who don't know this song, this is the perfect bluegrass song, and I'll say that knowing full well that I wrote it, but it's not bragging if you can do it. I think Yogi Berra said that. I got to thinking about what it would take to write the perfect bluegrass song. And there are a couple of uh, prerequisites for the perfect bluegrass song. First of all, it's got to be a banjo, you know. Then, of course, you know, bluegrass music is always, you know, it's, it's music that's sung from the heart, through the nose. Um, it's music that uh, is usually happy sounding upbeat music with miserable depressing lyrics. So uh, bluegrass songs are almost always about a cabin, so I included a cabin. Um, they have to have family, somebody to live in the cabin, your mom, dad, sister, so I included all that. And then for the really, you know, the really uh, miserable depressing part, somebody has to die. So I wrote the cabin of death. I hope you love it. died up in our cabin little sisters in there dying too we'll bury her out back behind the cabin we'll save a spot beside for me and you now everybody's dying in our cabin <laughs> we all thought that it was just a flu turns out it was something really different now it's even killing me and you. <laughs> well, first we called upon the family doctor. See if he could save little sister Sue He said he'd never seen anything quite like it Look out back, he's buried out there too Now everybody's dying in our cabin We all thought that it was just the flu Turns out it was something really different Now it's even killing me and you now, I also left out of the uh, of this song, I, I had, had to write a third verse to please this uh, record company executive that I knew years ago, and so I wrote that, but I also realized that I had forgotten to put in the perfect banjo lick. Do you all know what the perfect banjo lick is? Some of you do. I see you nodding your heads out there. The perfect lick is this one. Now, you know why that's the perfect banjo lick? That lick will fit any key. Any key. Tom, strum me a big old G chord on the neck there, if you would, please. How about C? How about D? Now, that's pretty much every key right there, but how about F? How about B flat? How about B? It'll fit almost any key that's the perfect banjo lick right there. All right, so I wrote a third verse, killed everybody off, and then on the last chorus, you all got to sing along with me, and I'll help you with the words. And if you don't get them right, I usually don't either. It's okay. It's the cabin of death. You can't hurt it. It's okay. If you should ever go out to our cabin, up along the pine trees on the hill, You'll find a rusty shovel in the graveyard. Dig a hole when you start feeling ill. Now everybody's dying in our cabin. We all thought that it was just a flu. We all thought that it was just a flu. Turns out it was something really different. Turns out it was something really different. Now it's even killing me and you. Now it's even killing me and you. Now it's even killing me and you.
Thank you.